science in high schools. Um, the uh, the Discovery Institute is is behind all of this, uh, you know, intelligent design stuff. And why is it that only Christians are interested in intelligent design? You don't see right. any other groups fighting for this. It's it's a it, they they complain that it, you know they talk about teach the controversy. There's no controversy. It isn't science. It needs to be peer reviewed. They keep trying to bypass that process. Now they have people at the Discovery Institute who will say, "Well, it is peer reviewed." Well, yeah, it's it's reviewed by their own peers. Right. <laughs> but they're, they're, that's not the kind of peer review that withstands public scrutiny. The whole point of 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 uh, tr of, of the Discovery Institute's uh, efforts behind intelligent design is to rechristianize American schools. Uh, destroy scientific materialism and basically uh, return the country to a Christian-based uh, theocracy, or not, not a theocracy, it wasn't a theocracy, but they want right. a theocracy. Right. So this is all about separation of church and state, folks. Um, and if you have uh, you know, a, a comment about this one way or the other, we'd love to hear from you. Yep. Uh, the number is 206-421-5658. Uh, right. and, and this is uh, Ask an Atheist. If you guys uh, if you guys don't know what you're tuning into, we tune in here. Uh, it's every Sunday live at from 3 to 4 p.m. And we want to take your calls, 206-421-5658. So I think we are, um, I think we're done with the news here. And, and I think this provides a perfect segue for us to just move straight into the introduction to your topic. So if you'd be so kind. Yes, absolutely. To take us down the down memory lane. Yeah. Down the rabbit hole here. Well, by way of introduction, I think the most the most important thing we can start with is, you know, what is the separation of church and state? Um, it is the same thing as the, the First Amendment. Um, it's the most important amendment in the Constitution. And I'm going to read it verbatim so that there's no question about what we're talking about. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government, the government for a redress of grievances. Now, religious conservatives and the, the teabaggers and, and all their ilk love to talk about how the uh, separation of church and state is found nowhere in the Constitution. Right. Well, you know what? That's true. I mean, murder is not found in the Constitution. <laughs> right. There's a whole lot of things I could say that are not found in the Constitution. The point is not are the words separation of church and state in the Constitution. It's right. the concept. In fact, that that very concept was fantastically demonstrated uh, with uh, the most spectacular ignorance I think I've ever seen with the Christine O'Donnell sure. debate uh, with Chris Coombs. Right, so she was, uh, just to set it up for our folks who haven't seen it, and I don't think we, we're, we have the video to show it, but she was essentially in a debate with um, with her opponent, and her opponent was... Uh, Chris Coons. Her, her opponent, Chris Coons, was explaining, I think because she she's an outright theocrat, she was explaining to him, or he was trying to explain to him, uh, separation of church and state is in the First Amendment. And then she is like, she has this sort of vapid laugh where really? she's saying, really? Is it, is it yeah. the First Amendment? The Are First you Amendment? sure? Where, where, you know, I think, uh, as we were talking about before, later, um, uh, her sort of handlers, Christian O'Donnell handlers, were saying, we're trying to spin this afterwards because she was being laughed at from the audience. I mean, she really, there were people that were there who were laughing at her. Oh, and they tried to spin this to say, oh, well, no, the word separation of church and state aren't literally in there. Um, but... No, doesn't does not the separation of church and state as a concept come from another letter by you're going to say this later I bet you yes. by the guy who wrote the most of the Constitution Thomas Jefferson yes Thomas Jefferson and it, it actually originally uh, uh, James Madison but yeah let's let's get to the original words um, the uh, Jefferson uh, wrote a letter to the Danbury Baptists who were concerned about the state of Connecticut, uh, which had its own state religion, basically overwhelming and taking a, a, a advantage of abusing uh, the Danbury Baptists. And Jefferson's response to them was as follows. Believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. I contemplate with several sovereign reverence that act of the whole American people which declares that their legislature should, quote, make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church right. and state. Now, it couldn't be any clearer than that, but right. I, we've also got quotes from uh, the, the second president, uh, J uh, James Madison, who said, 
The purpose of the separation of church and state is to keep forever from these shores the ceaseless strife that has soaked the soil of Europe with blood for centuries. And indeed, mm. many of the people, most of the people who came to the United States in the early days mm. were coming here because of religious persecution. Um, so that the whole idea of this being established as a Christian nation and the whole idea of this, the founding fathers being Christians, please. Right. I was in a, a Bellevue, uh, a church in Bellevue last, the last couple of weeks where they're talking about the founding fathers. They talked about uh, uh, Madison, Washington, e even Jefferson being theists. Oh my God, that is so far from the truth. It's a right. complete misrepresentation. Let's go back to Washington's words. If they are good workmen, they may be of Asia, Africa, or Europe. They may be Mohammedans, Jews, or Christians of any sect, or they may be atheists. This is George Washington's letter to uh, uh, Tang Tingman asking for asking him to secure a carpenter and a bricklayer for his Mount Vernon estate, March 24th, 1784. Um, and that's uh, quoted from, uh, let's see, Ed and Michael Buckner, quotations that support the separation of church and state. Right. And these are just a few examples, and these aren't taken out of context, like we hear from so many of our uh, theists, uh, from the theists' uh, point of view. Right. Well, I think that the most important part there is that, uh, yes, the Founding Fathers did have a notion of... Um, did have a notion of there being a spectrum of belief and unbelief. Again, uh, you're watching Ask an Atheist. We uh, we don't have our technical voodoo along the screen here, so we'll just do it out loud. Our phone number is 206-421-5658. So if you want to call in and joust with us a little bit, we're we're happy to do some back and forth. Absolutely. We especially want you if you uh, if you actually think that this is a Christian nation and that we need to be getting back to the way the founding fathers intended, as I've seen on countable number of times i should stop reading comments on youtube i really just <laughs> i really should stop reading comments on youtube and on articles uh on articles on very small not good for your blood pressure yeah provincial uh tv stations that want to do polls about whether or not you know we should put the 10 commandments on display at someone's school yeah. you know i just yeah I, i've got questions for people who think that this is a christian nation uh, just some basic things um you know, going back to the uh, the rechristianization, attempts to rechristianize American public schools comes in the form of creationism, also known as intelligent design, supported by right wing Christian think tanks like the Discovery Institute, and only Christians want ID. Why? That's my first question. Another one is, if this is a Christian nation, and I hear so many of you theists out there saying that it is, and I've seen so many videos on it, and we have no shortage of politicians who talk like that. Uh, the most recent example being Christine O'Donnell. Why doesn't it say in the Constitution that we're somehow a Christian nation, or at least a right. God-fearing nation? It doesn't mention anything about it. Uh, the word God and Christ was, appear yeah, nowhere. I was going to say, Christianity as a religion doesn't have uh, a monopoly on a, 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 a God, necessarily. If you were to specifically say we were a Christian nation, they would have had to have mentioned Christ, right? Mm -hmm. other, other, other than that, what, what religion are you talking about? If you're, if you're talking about, well, I think we might have narrowed down a little bit. If you're using God in the singular, maybe you can make a case that it boils it down to sort of monotheistic religions. You might be able to be making that case. But if uh, if this is specifically a Christian nation in letter, then why isn't Jesus Christ not mentioned anywhere in any of our founding documents? That's right. And I also have a... Answer that question. Answer that question. And I have a big problem with the... Uh, with the United States military, especially the Air Force, but all of them. And I, I served in why, the United States. Why specifically the Air Force? Because the Air Force right now is, uh, they have been doing a lot of proselytizing. Mm. Um, they've been putting a lot of pressure on, on their, um, mili their members to uh, convert. It was made clear to me when I was in the service that, um, you know, here, read this book. And it was something, oh, what was it, uh, The Power of Positive Thinking by, uh, what's that guy's name? Vincent Peale, Norman Vincent Peale, hmm. um, that and other books. And it was given to me in, framed in terms of, this will help you with your next promotion. I, I can't think of a better example of, right. you know, be more like me and I'll make sure you get prom your promotion. <laughs> and I, I really have a problem with the military with that uh, rock the base event that they had last month, right. uh, which I believe Americans United and a couple of other organizations wrote a letter petitioning them to stop, to not do this. Uh, they did it anyway, and I don't know what the fallout's going to be, but if you're outraged like that, uh, we want to hear from you. It looks right. like we do have a caller. Right. Alan, and Alan, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. We hear you great. What's your question? Hey, what do you got for us, Alan? All right, I wanted to come in on the topic earlier of religion being used to influence the schools. Yes. Uh, I'm an atheist science teacher, 
middle school, like seventh grade, eighth grade level, science, paleontology, that kind of stuff. Oh. And when I first came to the school, there was no one else in my 10-person science department who taught evolution. Everyone really? was too afraid to actually teach what was actually in the guidelines, in the Florida guidelines. Everyone was like, all right, I'll give them a worksheet on one day, and we'll teach it. Uh, I, It's not a Christian school. It was a public school. Huh. But I had to go from door to door saying, all right, here's my copy of Walking with Beasts. Show this. Show this. And I had to basically teach the other teachers about evolution. Some of them didn't know some of the concepts. So, so this was a public school, and I uh, didn't catch. Or you're, I'm guessing you're in the greater Seattle area, I assume, right? The greater Puget Sound area. Uh, no, actually, South Florida area. Oh, South Florida. Oh, well, well, welcome to the Which show. Is, I suppose, oh, no uh, in, in, a, in a joking manner, Alan, I suppose uh, with everything that's been sl slung at Florida for being the backward state since the I don't know the beginning of. <laughs> the beginning of the 21st century. I guess I, was, I uh, guess I'm not surprised, but again, no, that it also I seems. Mean, further, sorry. Go no, go ahead, Alan. Please. We're in the most cosmopolitan part of Florida, South Florida. But the further north you go, the further south you are. <laughs> I was just at a teachers' conference where they mentioned that, like in North Florida, near uh, if you know or Ocala, Orlando, mm -hmm. like the Mouse Kingdom. You can't even mention, like, evolution or the Big Bang without no. being really guarded. Well, I, I suppose Florida is still in the South. I, I guess that's really shocking. I, I, I haven't, I've never heard it before about a public, a public school teachers that just didn't, that didn't know about evolution at all. I mean, I've, uh, here in Seattle, I've been actually been working, volunteering at, say, middle schools and asked science teachers and said, you know, uh, Seattle's a pretty progressive place. And I asked them and said, do you ever have any conflicts with teaching evolution? Do you ever have kids that stand up and say, I don't want to be taught this? And uh, the one of the women, she responded to me, she said, oh, I'm a Christian. I don't have any problem teaching evolution. And I've never had a problem with a student saying, I don't want to learn this because this is not what I believe. So I, I think we're just two worlds apart, Alan, unfortunately, <laughs> I think. Oh, no. I will say thank you, for right. keep, thank you for keeping up the, you know, for keeping up the faith and... Uh, Wrote the faith, I would assume. Thank you for, for uh, keeping up the wall of the separation of church and state. The faith in the wall of the separation of church and state. Uh, because we need more people like you, obviously. Thank Quite you very much. Keep Quite up a reason. Good show. Oh, thanks, Alan. Thanks, we'll Alan. Talk to you later. Look yeah. at the magic of television here. Technology. Two, two zero, two zero six four two one five six five eight. We are Ask an Atheist. We are atheists. You can ask us things. That's why we're here. Yes. Now, I had, I had some really cool video clips prepared, but due to technical difficulties, we won't be able to show them to you today. But <laughs> I do want to describe some of them and encourage you to go to the Internet and take a look at these. Um, we, can, we can link these on our site afterwards. So yeah. if we're not able to see them now, you can go back, visit our site, uh, see all the things we have in store for the future, as well as view the things we couldn't show. In yeah. Here. So. That was a real eye-opener. and I, I found this a few days ago. It's called The Bible Riots of 1844. In... Long story short, in Philadelphia, um, in the early 19th century, um, there were a lot of immigrants coming I'd rather in. prefer a sh short story long, if you could. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, go on. But sorry. there were um, a lot of immigrants coming in uh, to our shores to work, uh, and a lot of uh, Irish, a lot of uh, uh, Irish Catholics. Um, and there was a big Protestant reaction to it. A lot of them were uh, treated the Catholics very poorly, uh, considered them to be the scum of the earth. Um, and eventually, there was a, a riot broke out in which um, an innocent bystander got shot. And this is all because uh, the, 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 the Protestants had one version of the Bible that was taught in the schools. The, the, the fact that they were teaching or reading the Bible in schools wasn't controversial at the time. In fact, it was standard practice to read ver verses uh, from the Bible as part of their uh, normal uh, activities, academic activities. The Catholics wanted a more Catholic-friendly version of it, and eventually th tensions uh, grew, and uh, a riot broke out, and when it was all over, about 30 people were hurt, one, one person was shot, killed on the spot, and about, I think it was close to 100 Catholic homes were burned and completely destroyed, and I'm sure that uh, they, they damaged a lot of churches in the process.